So we stop that. Uh, oh. Just let me just get I mean, each. Do you have it, Sister Purima? Uh, yes, 219, paragraph 2. In the study of agriculture. Indication 219. But I think your paging is different. Mm -hmm. so under manual training. Okay. Oh, yeah, physical or oh, manual training, yeah. In the city of agriculture, let pupils be given not only theory, but practice. Yes. Okay. Huh? So let me just share the screen. Okay. So we are right here. You are you are right. Is it paragraph two? Yes. Okay. Okay, it says uh, in the study of agriculture. Let pupils be given not only theory, but practice. While they learn what science can teach in regard to the nature and preparation of the soil, the value of different crops, and the best methods of product production, let them put their knowledge to use. Let teachers share the work with the students and show what results can be achieved through skillful, intelligent efforts. Thus may be awakened a genuine interest an ambition to do the work in the best possible manner. Such an ambition, together with the invigorating effect of exercise, sunshine and pure air, will create a love for agricultural labor that uh, with many youth will determine the choice of an occupation. And this uh, might be set on food influences that would go far in turning the tide of migration, which now sets so strongly toward the great cities. And thus, also our schools could aid effectively in the disposition of the unemployed masses. Thousands of helpless and starving beings whose numbers are daily swelling the ranks of the criminal classes might achieve self-support in a happy, helpful, independent life if they could be directed in skillful, diligent labor in the tilling of the soil. Any, anything you would like to share on that? Um, I think for me, the most important thing here is when you study, the best thing is um, practice. You study and then you practice it. Mm -hmm. And um, while they learn what science can teach. So this is a science lesson as well um, in regard to the nature and preparation of the soil. So understanding the soil, the value of the different crops, and the best methods of production. Um, so we're told to to study this, and then um, a good majority or good part of the those that do will determine that their choice um, is agriculture for an occupation. I think that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. And then all the masses see that the people that um, are unemployed and on unemployment insurance and then welfare and things like that. It's telling us here in that second paragraph that those that are unemployed, masses of people, thousands, helpless and starving, if they would um, get into this, this agriculture and the study of the soil. And for me <clears throat> personally, um, I've wanted to do this for so long and I've done little bits of it. And when my children were young, um, I got into the soil, but it's now in my retirement years that really uh, loving it, not that I didn't love it then, but I think the more you know about the soil and plants and, and you're successful in gardening, the more you love it and want to do it. And then also the closer we get to the time of trouble, which we've read about for so long, um, you can't prepare for the time of trouble when it hits. The time to prepare is before 
before. When all is peace and so-called safety, um, that's when you prepare. So uh, it's my prayer for all those who know the truth or who especially are Adventists, that their eyes be open, their hearts be open to receive this information about agriculture and experience it. Because truly, like this this week, I um, I ate um, sweet potatoes that I grew. And mm. I harvested sweet potatoes. And they taste so good. <laughs> <clears throat> and and bitter melon i'm eating bitter melon it's it's pretty incredible um but how god works with us um to to appreciate it to love it to be successful at it if we're always just battling the weeds i see so many spiritual lessons then we if we're battling weeds all the time it's because we don't know how to contain those weeds we don't know how to um uh, eradicate them and keep them away and um, it's like sin when we're told, you know, by so many that sin cannot be overcome. We'll still be sinning when Jesus comes. No, no, no. <clears throat> sin can be overcome as well when we understand um, the soil of the heart and how to keep it soft and how to die to self and why God says die to self, because that's that mulch that you put on the um on the surface of the soil so it's protected from the hard um uh, climate the sun beating on it and and so forth and um so we need to keep our hearts soft so that when sin is pointed out we are pr reproved or corrected um we don't resist it we um we receive it and we allow self to die and we accept it and uh, we, we get victory through Jesus, through knowing him. <clears throat> so, yeah, I see a lot in these two paragraphs. And uh, that last uh, statement <clears throat> where it says, I guess it's a long sentence, um, thousands of helpless and starving beings whose numbers are daily swelling the ranks of the criminal classes might achieve what? Self-support in a happy, healthy independent life if they could be directed in skillful diligent labor in the tilling of the soil so <clears throat> what a work we have to do to learn about it to read it and then to um, apply it practice it yeah beautiful amen so we we, we see both uh the theoretical and the practical application to it if you only do the theoretical and you don't do the practical it will not uh, produce of uh, much fruit uh we also right. for the employment part of it seeing that a lot of mm -hmm. people are prevent a lot of people from migrating to the cities mm -hmm. so but if yes. they on, if they understand the importance mm -hmm. and the and the duty and the wonders of uh tilling the soil Yes. So this is this is wonderful. I I believe it's a part of growing up into the likeness of Christ as well, because mm -hmm. I remember um, being young and complaining, whether it was out loud or just in my own heart. Oh, I remember string beans. Not that we had a big garden or anything. I don't think we were growing food. I don't know where the string beans came from, but just having strings in the string bean because I've just grown string beans and I've been eating them and they're just so wonderful. But when I was younger, I just felt like it was a lot of work to, you know, take the strings out. And I don't know, you know how children think they just, they, they want things easy and they, they don't want to work. And, and I'm just so thankful to be able to see how I've grown personally. Um, and yet, if I still have complaining and murmuring in my heart about certain things, which I have seen this week, as we've um, in our Bible lesson for the family Bible lessons, it was on um, the children of Israel in the in the wilderness and how they murmured and complained. Um, that murmuring and complaining in in whether you're a child or an adult that's going to lead to, you know, hardness of the heart. It's going to lead to just all kinds of unhappiness. 
And um, what I've learned as I've grown up is that the things that we don't like to do, if we don't complain, if we ask Jesus to help us to love it, especially when it's telling us here how important it is to be able to work the soil, <clears throat> that God will help us to overcome. And then when you aren't thinking those bad negative thoughts, then your thoughts are uh, looking for, your mind is looking for um, the spiritual lessons, the benefits. And then of course, just eating from the garden is such a benefit. So I'm thankful that God is merciful to us and we need to be merciful to those that don't know. And especially our children who may, may be complaining about <laughs> working in the garden or whatever, but we want to be able to find the joy in the journey and, and God can give that joy to us. That's what I see. Amen. Okay, so we'll continue. <clears throat> There's the benefit of manual training is needed also by professional men. A man may have a brilliant mind. He may be quick to catch ideas. His knowledge and skill may secure for him admission to his chosen calling. Yet he still, yet he may still be far from possessing a fitness for his duties. An education derived chiefly from books leads to superficial thinking. Practical work encourages close observation and independent thought. Rightly performed, it tends to develop and practic the, that practical wisdom which we call common sense. It develops mm. to plan and execute, strengthens courage and perseverance and calls for the exercise of tact and skill. A physician who has laid a foundation for his professional knowledge by actual service in the sick room will have a quickness of insight and all round knowledge and an ability in emergencies to render needed service, all essential qualifications which only a practical training can so fully impart. So as mm -hmm. we were saying earlier on about the practical application, so you see the um mm -hmm. It's been applied to the uh, the physician. Uh, it 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 implies to also men who are who are called professional men. They, mm -hmm. If they do only book study, they will have a superficial uh, thought or thinking, and mm -hmm. they will not be able to apply what they have learned. Mm -hmm. I think it lends itself to to the uh, information that we've read before about education, true education, is that it's a little bit of education, a little bit of that theory, and then go to work, put it into practice. Yeah. Okay. No more comments, we will continue. There's the minister, the missionary, the teacher will find the influence with the people greatly increase when it is manifested that they possess the knowledge and skill required for practical duties of everyday life. And often the success, perhaps the very life of the missionary depends on his knowledge of practical things. The ability to prepare food, to deal with accidents and emergencies, to treat disease, to build a house or a church if need be, Often these make all the difference between success and failure in his life work. Huh. Huh. He says, in acquiring an education, many students would gain a most valuable training if they could become self-sustaining. Instead of incurring debts or depending on the self-denial of their parents, let young men and women depend on themselves. They will just learn the value of money the value of time, strength, and opportunities, and will be under far less temptation to indulge idle and spendthrift habits. The lessons of economy, industry, self-denial, practical business management, and steadfastness of purpose thus mastered 
would prove a most important part of the equipment for the battle of life. And the lesson of self-help learned by the student would go far toward preserving institution of learning from the building of depth under which so many schools have struggled and which has done so much toward crippling their usefulness. So we are seeing that practicality is most needful uh, to be a to be a, a, a child of God and also talked about debt, winkering debt mm -hmm. by going to school. Mm -hmm. Sorry, by um we we she we admonish not to do that. So that's why you have the, the school in itself have to help in terms of a practice manual labor in growing what, especially in agriculture, that you are, what you said, you are able to make some uh, some money from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should have the Madison School model. Many other schools, part of Creek, I think, as well. Yeah, so I can move on. Sure. Okay. He says, let the youth be impressed with the thought that education is not to teach them how to escape life's disagreeable tasks and heavy burdens, that his purpose is to lighten the world by teaching better methods and higher aims. Teach them that life's aim is not to secure the greatest possible gain for themselves, but to honor the maker in doing the part of the world's work and lending a helpful hand to those weaker or more ignorant. Says, uh, one great reason why physical toil is looked down on is the slipshod, unthinking way of which it is so often performed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is done from necessity, not from choice. The worker puts no heart into it, and he, he neither preserves self-respect nor wins the respect of others. Manual training should correct this error. It should develop habits of accuracy and, for and thoroughness. People should learn tact and system. They should learn to economize time and to make every move count. They should not only be taught the best methods, but be inspired with ambition constantly to improve. Let it be their aim to make their work as nearly perfect as human brains and hands can make it. So again, counsel us to doing the doing the right how to go about doing this manual labor that it be a blessing and not a curse. But let me just read that first that paragraph, that first paragraph. It says let the youth be impressed with the fall that education is not to teach them how to escape life's disagreeable tasks and heavy burdens. That its purpose is to lighten the work by teaching better methods and higher aims. Praise the Lord. Teach them that life's true aim is not to secure the greatest possible gain for themselves but to honor the maker in doing the part of the world's work and lending a helpful hand to those weaker and more ignorant. Mm -hmm. So, any thoughts on the two paragraphs? Or? Good evening. I wanted to go back to what you spoke before, the paragraph before. Two paragraphs before. Mm -hmm. mm. The prophet is saying that you know everyone, the minister, the missionary teacher, will find their influence with people greatly increase when it manifests up when they manifest a knowledge of skill in the practical duties of everyday life. And many times, you know, people may go on the field because they chose my call to go on the field, and sometimes people don't have. They don't have the experience or a practical knowledge of a lot of things. You know, how to deal with emergencies, how to treat some, you know, they have to go out and give tracts or whatever. And if, if something should occur, they don't know what to do. And uh, the prophet is saying that we need to have that, that knowledge. We need, need to have that knowledge. But because of education, our education has um, taught us it's a you know, you told us to go and get a job. 
and the and she and the and God is saying here that instead of incurring debts of the parents or depending on the, on the parents, young men should learn to depend on themselves. You know, but most of the times we want our children to go to school and because that's what we that's what we were taught. Get your education, go and get a job. You know, mm -hmm. that is it. But sure. God is saying, God is saying no. We have to because it, the purpose of true education is to restore God's image in man. But when we do God, when we do it God's way, we will learn a lot of a lot of things about life. You know, economy, industry, seminar, practical business management, as she is saying here. Set persons of purpose. You know, and we will be able to learn the um basic vicissitude of life when these things occur. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. manual training is very, very important. <clears throat> Although this, this is looked down. You know, people look down on the mechanic or the mason because you know they, they don't have a degree. You know, and we know that that's happening. Right. That's just, we just look down upon these people. You know, but once you, you know they will, they will um promote somebody who has a degree or you know a master's, and some other can't. Because I heard a pastor say once, you know, this light was flickering in, in, at home, and he didn't know what to hear to call a, a electrician. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when, when the man comes, the man just come and change the bulb and he said, but wait. <laughs> because he's so, you know, they don't have the, the, the they don't have it. <laughs> so these little things help a whole lot when you learn things as you go out in life. Right. And I think that maybe a hundred years ago, there was more um, practical um wisdom and that was that was made important but once um especially the women started going to school and everything and the degree became everything um that i think we lost which was on page um 220 paragraph the benefit of manual training where it talks about common sense and so i think for the most part what this last um little bit that we've been reading is about it's about having common sense which it says it's practical wisdom now i was told well, i wasn't told but my mother didn't think that i had common sense oh no i don't think i had the practical wisdom because i wasn't being taught that that was what was important it was practical wisdom it was more about go to school get good grades i even got money for um, my grades uh, from my parents so that was the push, get good grades. And um, so I think this is really important. This chapter is so special to help us to see that even that paragraph where it talks about the minister, the missionary, and the teacher will find that their influence is greatest with the people and increased if they have that everyday practical knowledge of how to take care of um, things. And then when you have people today getting married, and then the woman doesn't know how to cook. Um, the husband doesn't really know how to fix anything. Um, then it's uh, a lot of the mentality with parents is just if I have children, we just give them to the the daycare and and then, you know, get them into school. And it's like the parents are off the hook. But that's not God's program. Um, God wants us especially to be learning these practical duties in the home and and especially the home school and um, become self-sustaining so that's where industry comes in and it's a part of god's system of education and that's what we have to start modeling after and focusing on is god's system of education has to do with um developing skills Cooking, sewing, agriculture, gardening, um, you know, taking care of the home, taking care of money. Uh, here it says to learn the value of money and the value of time. So a lot, a lot of instruction and child guidance about um, have your children, you know, on a schedule, have them um, know how much time um, their chores should take and then you know, plan to do something special afterwards so that they get in, they get their jobs done and um, spend thrift habits. 
uh, temptation to indulge idle and spendthrift habits. Spendthrift habits. So I used to look at that and say, oh, that's like shopping at the thrift store. No, it's it's um, being more thrifty with your with your money and, and your habits. So once again, this is what I like about the paragraph, the last, I don't know if it was the last one we read about inquiring and education. Many students would gain a most valuable training if they would become self-sustaining. And then in that same paragraph, it tells us what we should master. So we have a lot of people today getting their master's degree and whatever. And um, here we're told, and I've read this through throughout the years as well. We should master in Christianity, and then um, this this whole list in this this chapter of acquiring an education. We should master those things, and and working the soil and having um, uh, these skills will help us to to ha- to be able to master these things as well. Amen. But sometimes the, the um the sometimes the, the, the young people doesn't want to work, you know. They don't want to Who work. doesn't want to work? Sometimes the young don't oh, want the to young. work. The young. Yeah, sometimes. Well they then don't they don't work. eat. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. Yes. <laughs> it may seem cruel, but you know, at, when you're hungry enough, maybe you'll get up. Well, and I think that we serve, we serve our children. And when children are um, saying that they don't want to work, um, they're they're saying that they're ruling well. If if they don't have a place to to live, lay their head, uh, warmth, um, and food, you know, they're going to get up and they're going to do something, hopefully. Or then they have welfare. So a lot of people live off of welfare. They're raised on welfare. That's where the government pays um, for them to to live and not work. Hmm. So we want to get back to looking at what is God's system of education, what is his plan, and he knows what is best for us. We don't have to be starving. We don't have to live in the city. Um, We need to learn how to work the soil. And it's a wonderful, wonderful work. God wouldn't say this to us that we would need to learn this if it wasn't a wonderful work. It is truly a wonderful work. Amen. Yeah. Okay. I was just going through, uh, as you could see my screen, I was searching uh, the word <laughs> lawyer. Because I know we came across it whilst we were reading uh, the same manual labor. And it is, uh, the persons might be asking, what is, are, are we called to be lawyers? Are we called to be merchants? Are we called to be clerks? As, is, you see, are you seeing the screen? Yes. Yeah. So, now we're sending all that has been said and written contain the dignity of labor. Uh, the feeling prevails that it is degrading. <laughs> oh, young, yeah. men are, young men are anxious to become teachers, clerks, merchants, f- uh, physicians, lawyers, or to occupy some other position that does not require physical toil. And we see that a lot. We see that a lot. And you know what those might be saying? Oh, we can do physical exercise, <laughs> go in the morning, walk. Uh, we 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 don't need to have this physical meaning, uh, agric- uh, which is gained through agriculture. It says, or to occupy some other position that does not require physical toil. Young women shun housework and seek an education in other lines. These need to learn that no man or woman is degraded by honest toil. Praise the Lord. It says that which degrades is idleness and selfish dependence. Idleness fosters self-indulgence, and the result is a life empty and barren, a field inviting the group of every evil. He says, The earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh up upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiving blessing from God. 
but that which bearer falls and bride is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. It's coming from the book of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. So you see, physical labor, it is a blessing. It is it is a blessing. Yes. It is a blessing. And and for children, children need that physical constitution built up. They need to have strong bodies. And and then there's um, a lot of instruction for um, women, especially before menopause. So that would be like in your 30s, uh, 40s, to be to be out and be industrious, um, be physical. Uh, we there's a lot of osteoporosis today. Um, bones are just disintegrating. Disintegrating. They're they're saying lack of calcium. Well, um, <clears throat> there it's more than that. We need uh, we need exercise and um, weight bearing exercise. It's so wonderful. Um, there there's science studies that um, show that disease um, comes to those who are either fit, all, do all physical work or all mental work. There's a need of a balance. So to do physical and mental work throughout the day. So we get um, like in Genesis where it says we need to sweat every day, especially now after sin, we need to sweat. We need to have those impurities uh, removed from the body and sweat is the fastest way to remove the impurities and impurities build up waste builds up on a daily basis so many reasons um to to get outside get that physical exercise and um also it's so much a part of the health message to get that physical exercise as well but you know you can't make people do it you can't force them to do it um god is calling us he's drawing us with his love to to follow him and um so that's why i'm so thankful we're reading and studying to know what god says is best for humanity especially sinful humanity amen amen okay so we'll read the two last paragraphs in this chapter uh it says Session will make the youth masters and not slaves of labor. It will lighten the lot of the hard toiler and will enable even the homeless occupation. He who regards work as mere drudgery and settles down to it with self complacent ignorance, making no effort to improve, will find it indeed a burden. But those who recognize science in the homeless way will seek homeless work, sorry will see in it a nobility, nobility and beauty and will take pleasure in performing it with faithfulness and efficiency. A youth so trained, whatever he is calling in life, so long as it is honest, will make his position one of usefulness and honor. Amen. Awesome. And Amen. Let me just read that those last paragraphs again. You were saying something? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, go ahead and read it. It says, such training will make the youth masters and not slaves of labor. It will lighten the lot of the hard toiler and will enable even the homeless occupation. He who regards work as a mere, as mere drudgery and settles down to it with self-complacent ignorance, making no effort to improve, will find it indeed a burden. But those who recognize signs in the homeless work we will see in it nobility and beauty and will take pleasure in performing it with faithfulness and efficiency. A youth so trained, uh, whatever he's calling in life, so long as it is honest, will make his position one of usefulness and honor. Amen. And amen. Amen. <clears throat> so here again is the, the word master. Um we're, we're to get our masters by mastering our labor, mastering our work. And it's saying here that um, there's a science in the humblest work. And in it, in it will be seen nobility and beauty and will take pleasure in performing it with faithfulness and efficiency. Those are powerful words. 
and <clears throat> there's uh, other places and like I, I think it's child guidance where we're instructed to master our work. So we, we're slaves to our work when let's say we start something and then oh uh, we stop, we sit down, we read a book, we get back to it. In other words, it's taking us to do a chore. T- it's taking us a long, long time to do it. But that's not the way we're supposed to. We're supposed to get in, get it started, get it done. Of course, when we have little children and things, there's all kinds of interruptions. But for the most part, we want to get in. We want to know how to get the work done the best, using the best methods, and um, and be faithful at it, perf- being a perfectionist at, at the most humble work. So um, I also wanted to just say, okay, so when you're doing that humble work, what you're doing is you're adding to your faith. In Second Peter chapter 1, it's part of the ladder of true success, climbing that ladder, adding to your faith virtue, and the, the root of all virtues is humility. And so I'm just so thankful for when I was a little girl, um, how I... I had to do the wash for the family. I had to um, fold the clothes. I I didn't do much cooking, but um, sadly, uh, cleaning the house, uh, keeping things neat and clean and organized, all of that is so important for your future. Um, it, when you have your own family or you're running a business, whatever it is that you're doing. So we need to be masters and not slaves. I really, really like that. Amen. And amen. So we just finished uh, ch- chapter 24. It's, it's, it was entitled Manual Labor. Just go up so we could see. Sorry, Manual Training. Manual Training. So we are moving over to chapter 25 right now which is entitled Character Building. Character Building. And it says, See that thou make all things according to the pattern show thee in the mount. So this was the uh, sanctuary uh, given direction to be built. Again, see that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. And we are moving forward. It says, this is from chapter 25 in the book Education talks about education and character. Education and character. Let us see what what, what character does education bring? What character does uh, Christian education bring? What character does worldly education bring? And sometimes we, we try to compare it and we see sometimes the worldly education seems to be one that is that is very promising, one that is very successful, one that is very uh, ennobling and sometimes we we leave uh we, we forget about Christian education meaning which is true education and accept this uh, false system of education when we look into the world and seeing that those who went to those worldly schools have the have the, seems to have the best of life. So let us see what it says. Mm-hmm. It says the stability of thy times shall be wisdom and knowledge. Again the stability of thy times shall be wisdom and knowledge. It says, true education does not ignore the value of scientific knowledge or literary achievements, but above information, it is all, it is, it values power, above power, goodness, above intellectual acquirements, uh, character. So we see that uh, it, it has, it, it, it values power, and above power is goodness, above intellectual requirements you get character you get character he says the world does not so much need men of great intellect as of noble character 
it needs men in whom ability, sorry, ability is controlled by steadfast principle. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. The tongue of the wise is if knowledge aright. Get that from the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 2. It says, true education imparts this wisdom. It teaches the best use, not only of one, but of all our powers and, and, and acquirements. Thus, it covers the whole circle of obligation to ourselves, to the world, and to God. Any comments on there? Um, it, well, let me just um, say that knowledge today is what people are going for because knowledge is, is power. Knowledge is power. Um, that's why people, especially parents uh, who maybe are not educated in college universities and have their degrees, they want their children to have the knowledge, to have power power basically to to make money um but this is telling us what is the highest aim the highest aim is character so <clears throat> i think like um the world sees um things different than we do as uh, spiritual things are spiritually discerned so instead of making um knowledge the, the highest, um, God makes knowledge a part of it, but it's not the highest. And you you have a ladder in Second Peter, and I will mention that over and over and over. That's brought out also in the Sunlight Education Ministry, second grade to eighth grade program. Second Peter chapter one is the um, ladder of true success. And so you're, you have your faith at the bottom. God has given every man a measure of faith. That's your degree. And then, <clears throat> then it's virtue, then knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Well, it's knowledge of God, knowing God. And then it goes all the way up the ladder. At the top of the ladder is charity. And charity is God's love, agape love. And love encompasses all of his character qualities, all of his character qualities. So um, that's what I see. It's like the world sees things upside down. And when I say sees things upside down, when you, with through your eyes, when you see something, a picture, a person, let's say, it goes into the, the um, optic nerve upside down. And then when it gets up to the, the brain, <clears throat> it's turned right side up. And I always think of this when I pray, um, because when when we pray, it's the Holy Spirit that brings us to a knowledge of the truth and to bring all truth to us. So it's the Holy Spirit that puts it right side up. So I really see to see means to understand as well. To see this right side up, you need the Holy Spirit. And this is where I see that in, in our education, our meaning Christian Seventh-day Adventist education, we are not through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, seeing things right side up. Because if we did, we would see what this first, first two paragraphs are saying to us. It's character that's number one. So... In the Sunlight Education Ministry, um, from birth on, character is your focus. If you don't focus on that character, how are you going to, to be changed? Because by beholding, seeing, you're changed into the same image. So I really like God's system of education that builds our faith and um, builds character as we behold his character in the things that we study. It's the highest aim. It's not just um, having a degree to make money. That's that's not true education. Um, but God is going to provide. Uh, he's going to provide the funds that are needed. Uh, no matter what it is that you're doing for God, if you're going to God, confessing your sins, wanting to 
um, to build character. Uh, that means be honest, um, have integrity, compassion, all those beautiful character qualities. Most people, because they haven't focused on them, they can't really name them. Um, but in true education, that's what we study from birth on. We study a new character quality every week. So to me, that's really beautiful. So education and character. I think this is going to be, it's a short chapter, but it's going to be very, very valuable to us as we read further. Oh, and uh, when the second paragraph talks about wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. Um, there's a worldly wisdom and there's a godly wisdom. So this is speaking about the, the godly wisdom. Get wisdom is the principal thing. And to live by principle. To live by principle means that I'm going to, I want to know um, how to live my life each day. And so what does God say about, you know, when I should get up, when I should go to bed, when I should eat. Um, and God has laid out all those details for us uh, and how to learn and what to learn. And, uh, and for us to really have godly wisdom, we need to be um, doing what God says. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we will continue. We thank God for this chapter. It's yes. about education and character. This character building is the most important work ever entrusted to human beings. Uh, and never before was it is diligent study so important as now. Never was an never was any previous generation called to meet issues so moment so momentous. Never before were young men and young women confronted by perils so great as confront them today. At, at such a time as this, uh, what is the trend of the education given? To so what motive is appeal most often made? To so self-seeking. Much of the education given is a perversion of the name. In true education, the self-ambition, the greed for power, the disregard for the rights and needs of humanity that are the curse of our world finds a counter-influence. God's plan of life has a place for every human being. It is to improve his talent to the utmost and faithfulness in doing this, be the gifts a few or many, entitles one to honor. In God's plan, there is no place for selfish selfish rivalry. If those who measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Whatever we do is to be done as of the ability which God gave. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. It is to be done heartily as to the Lord and not to men. And knowing that the Lord uh, he shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for he served the Lord Christ. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Make Colossians 3, 23. Sing Colossians 3, 23 for that day. Colossians 3, 23. <laughs> 3, 23 and 24. Yeah. Come, Nico. 23. That um, I do want to do. I think that's one of the last ones that we do in the Bible. No, not open to God. Thank you. So this is only for us. I want to the Lord and not. Yeah. So come, come and sing for that evil. For whatever He do, do it hard to me. Not on to man. Collision free twenty three. So this is this is one of the, the scripture texts that we we learn in the in, in the sunlight uh curriculum. Collision three twenty three. He says precious the precious the service done and the education gained in carrying out these principles. But how widely different is much of the education now given? From the child's earliest years, it is an appeal to emulation and rivalry. 
it fosters selfishness, the root of all evil. So you see the comparison has been made. And I, I know that she, that the Lord will have us to be dealing with this as it relates to the difference that those two educations uh, bring, these two uh, methods of education. So we are seeing this. This is, this is where we are. Because it's, it said that uh, character building is the most important work ever interested in human beings. And never before was it diligent study so important as now. Never was any previous generation called to meet issues so momentous. Never before were young men and young women confronted by perils so great as confront them today. So we are seeing the two contending here. Any comments? Well, selfishness is the opposite of God's character. And this really needs to be brought home to us that the plan of education that the world has, which is a papal system of education, fosters selfishness, the root of all evil, self-seeking. And see, God's plan of education and in God's plan of education, we learn and we teach our children self-denial. That is so, so important that self dies and it's not what self wants. It's what God wants. Um, self-denial, self-control. Um, see, it's part of selfishness is self-indulgence. So we, we need to see what the enemy is doing to us. And do we have some of that in us still? Uh, that's what needs to die, the self-indulgence, the self, not having self-control. Um, when I don't deny myself and I, I want to grab everything for me. Um, and also to improve the talents given. So you're graded in, um, in school on your intellect and your memory and how much you can cram and pass a test and have that knowledge just for a time because as soon as you finish that class usually most of it is forgotten so developing your talent so um that's what i looked at especially with my daughter what her talents were and you can see the child's talents because it's what they like to do what they're good at and um, you help them develop those. Like my daughter could, um, she could draw well and she could write. She was starting to write stories. And those stories had no spiritual lessons. And so um, then that changed uh, the, I we changed her focus and made sure that whatever she was writing about had a spiritual focus, a spiritual principle. Uh, involved and then god just took took off with that with her and um and she can write now very very beautifully and if you can write well then you're thinking well as as um, as well <laughs> um but these are the things to improve our talents to the utmost and faithfulness in doing this, be the gifts few or many, and titles one to honor. So not everyone has been given um, many, many talents, but everyone has one talent. So we develop that one talent. Some have five talents, some have 10, some have 30. And so um, it's not that they're better. And there's this um, scripture that says, don't compare yourself with others. Um, we're to, to see what we know now and keep adding to it and adding to our knowledge, adding to our talents, using those talents for the Lord and, um, and all the praise goes to God, um, because we're workers together with him. So we don't want to foster, <laughs> foster selfishness, the root of all evil, and the best time to learn these character qualities of God is when children are young. But if we don't have teachers and parents that know this and they're just following 
the worldly system, that's where we really um, err because um, you can come in later to a knowledge of the truth, but then you have a lot of habits, bad habits to work through and habits are not that easy to overcome. So the soon as we can uh, begin educating children God's way, we need our we need our teachers and our parents and our people that are not parents yet, but will be parents. They need to know what is God's plan for education, God's system of education. To me, it's the greatest knowledge that I have attained um, in this world. And that is that God has a system of education. The world has a system of education and we need to know um, what God's plan is, and and as we look at the truth, the true plan, we're going to be able to, to detect that false system of education very easily. So that's why we're reading this book and studies in Christian education, so we can know God's plan. And we just want to encourage everyone we come in contact with, everyone we know, that God has a system of education, true system. Amen. So. One of the things uh, um, what you could look at also is that because you, we were all educated under the false system of education, you know, to be to emulate self, you know. So when you try like when you turn finishing school, you know, your happiness, you say, you know, what your child come and test, you know, he got he come first, you know. And the child who mm-hmm. come tenth, you, you see there's a there's a um you see what our rivalry will take place there. But then you know Jesus said, Jesus said we not ought, we ought not to be like the like the like the Gentiles because he said all of us are brethren. So when God look at us, he doesn't see one, you know, you come first, you come third, you come second, all of us on one level. You know? And that's why he tells you mustn't compare ourselves with ourselves. And that's supposed to be taught early, as we, we have seen here in the child, because we have we see it manifesting in adults and even children where they have this because the parents were telling them that they 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 um they're better than the other children, you know. So the child looked down on the other child. Or some adults they may have a lot of education in quotes, the degrees, but the character doesn't point point out Christ. You know. Right. I had a teacher, um, she's a mother now with three children, a teacher in here um, at the beginning of the week. And um, she told me, she said, uh, oh, just what it's like out there not being in, I don't think she was teaching in a, she wasn't teaching in a Christian school, but um, she said it was just really, really terrible. You know, how, how the students misbehave and what they do and their, um, like breaks and recess and um she she never wants to go back to it so she wants to learn what is god's system of education for her own three children and i think her oldest is only three probably almost four and um you know she because she's a trained trained to be a teacher um she's already you know been working with that three-year-old and reading and so i spent couple hours with her just helping her to see God's plan for education and that's not reading is not a part of it but yet he sees the child sees you reading and so they get interested in it um and that's fine too but it's not something you you have to sit down and teach yet um anyhow just going over the principles of the developing brain and how little boys are different than little girls. I saw that this week on Facebook. Um, uh, A lady was uh, talking about little boys have more testosterone when they're little and they, they just have the hardest time just sitting and they need to be up and active instead of being labeled ADHD and put on medication and this kind of thing. Satan is really trying to destroy our little boys because he knows they're to be leaders in the family and to be the priests 
And, um, and so because parents don't know uh, God's plan, they're listening to so-called professionals, but these professionals are worldly. They have worldly wisdom. They don't know God's higher wisdom, the highest wisdom. And so they're, uh, Satan is really taking hold of the little boys. And then in our church, uh, because uh, we haven't been educating God's, God's way, um, <clears throat> then we have people coming in to the church. And um, it's just th- the importance is not placed where it should be once again, because that's, that's um, worldly wisdom is about uh, academic education early on but god's education is about the spiritual the spiritual and the physical you that little child needs to be outdoors and and digging and planting and uh learning god's way that's true wisdom but you can take science like i i took that information about the little boy and testosterone because i hadn't heard that or read that in kind of information before but it goes right along with God's system of education it's and and that's that was the point of that scientific um information was uh, it's the school the the system in the school that is wrong it's not you know a little child that we have to put him on medication anyhow um <clears throat> yeah we we want to understand that God's system what we're reading right now is the highest the highest. We are God's people who have this information, have had it for almost 200 years, 178 years. And what have we done with it? You know, praise God, you know, we're we're looking at it now. And maybe it's a review for many, but we need to be promoting this. However, I mean, the rocks will cry out and the rocks were crying out this week. Um, and so people are waking up, people are listening, they have an ear to hear. And so we've got to, as God's people, show them um, God's true way. And the Bible, the Bible is to be the main textbook. So praise God that God has given us another day to start to or continue implementing his program, his system to give our little ones an opportunity to be fit for a holy heaven and us too. The very fact that we would love our children, love our neighbor um, <clears throat> as ourselves to, to be sharing and actually training up our children this way. This is just the greatest thing we could be doing at this time in earth's history, in my mind. <laughs> I, th- I think it may be time to go to um, studies in Christian education now. Okay, we will do just that. Okay. <clears throat> For those who are new, uh, we are studying the book Christian Studies in Christian Education by E. Sutherland talks about from the uh, the um the Protestant churches in the uh, the foreign Protestant churches be, uh, before they were fallen, and uh, they had the, the message that the Lord wanted them to 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 sound, which is the the midnight cry. But because they sort of accepted the the education from the papacy, they could not have done that loud cry. So. We have gone through that, so we are going into uh, the system of education that even Seventh-day Adventists have chosen. And uh, it's like a reform. It's, it, 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 this, this study, uh, if we allow it and let the Lord to work with the power of the Holy Spirit, that we will all want that reform as it relates to education, true education. So we are now reading... Uh, degrees and what they do and sorry what they lead to it says degrees have been indirectly referred to for the, okay so this book uh the writer had did experience that as he said the land and he's he has also put in a quotation from spirit of prophecy to uh help solidify 
uh, what system of education that we are using now. So let me just go again and read these degrees and what they lead to. It says degrees have been indirectly referred to for they are the reward of traditional courses. Were it not for the degree, it would be impossible to hold most students to a prescribed course. However, the most dangerous element in degree granting does not seem to be comprehended by those Christian educators who cling to the custom. A degree is a sign or seal of authority. In the Christian church, the conferring of degrees were originated by who? A pope as a sign of his authority over the educational system. Today, degrees are conferred by the state, and the state has no right to set its seal to the work of an institution unless it can approve the system of education offered by that school, Lord Hamnes. He says, the degree is a sign of its approval. He says, any Seventh-day Adventist school that grants degrees thereby invites state inspection and must accept and must sorry, accept the world standard and come into conformity to the worldly system of education. Claiming to conduct Christian schools, we yet seek to so teach that we can satisfy the worldly system. In time, the state will either demand a, a, absolute conformity to a system or refuse to grant the degrees. We saw that this happened. It says, if we are building up our work in such a manner as to encourage students to seek degrees, there is great danger that we that we will compromise on the true science of education in order to retain the state seal or mark. Seven day Adventists are not ignorant of the fact that even today the papacy has the control practically of all education, and in a short time this will be openly avowed. We need openly revealed. Then the inspection of our degree granting schools will be done directly by the papacy, and a degree, if granted, will again come will again come directly from that organization. It will be a seal or a mark of the beast. Other Protestants are filled here, as I just mentioned. Uh, what shall we seven Adventist students do? Our educator has summed up the whole degree question as follows. Let us see what he says. It says from this, from his first introduction, introduction to the school, to the taking of his final degree, teachers, parents, and dotting friends conspire in the efforts to stimulate the boy to get ahead of someone else. It says men wear degrees as women wear fine bonnets, jewels in their hair, rings in their ears, and on their fingers, and gay ribbons flaunted in the breeze. Consider, for example, the ornamental value of AM, MS, PhD, or the social value of such a tremendous decorative combination as they enjoyed by Miss, Miss, Miss James Brown, AM, PhD, LLD, DD, DD. Each one of these titles costs as much as a diamond of moderate size. We, I think I understand what it's going to say, or oh, a large pearl. <laughs> Not a, not a pool of great price. You said, who's that, Sister Dawn? Yes, you give us time so cool. <laughs> Yeah, you move moving so fast. <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, let, 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 let me let me go again. It says, I'll start from, from I'll start that paragraph again because this is so open, re revealing. It is revealing. It says, from, the, from his first introduction into the school to the taking of his final degree, teachers, parents, and dozen friends conspire in the efforts to stimulate the boy to get ahead of someone else. Men wear degrees as women wear fine bonnets, jewels in their hair, rings in their ears and on their fingers, and gay ribbons flaunting in the breeze. Consider, for example, the ornamental value of AM, MS, PhD, or the social value of such a tremendous decorative combination as that enjoyed by Mr. James Brown, AM, PhD, LLD, DD. Each one of these titles costs as much as a diamond of moderate size or a large pearl, and not a pearl of great price, and is worn for practically the same reason. God have mercy. He says it does not necessarily indicate anything. <laughs> John Smith, Taylor, 
James Brown, Black Smith, Mr. Jones, Sylvia are examples of titles which produce in the mind something more than the mere decorative effect. It says that this indicate the trade of profession by which the man gains his livelihood. So you see, are we understanding what's happening there? Yeah, it's, it's, I like the illustration of it um, being like uh, wearing a bonnet or a diamond mm -hmm. jewelry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you see the two professions, the, the two different mm -hmm. kinds of professions. You, you saw that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, can I add to the discussion? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, right. So, you know, it, it, it just explains to us the importance of um, these books because, you know, I was just reflecting that if someone who comes into the church and with how the church promotes certain things, they don't necessarily promote the reading of the books of LNG, right? They just make quotations here and there. And if you don't, if you are not... If you're not knowledgeable of this, you would know and you know, and when persons come and they do well in school, there's usually a point in the service where they stop and they promote the person or they they you know they they commend the person and all those things. You know, you, you would be of the the you would be of the belief that it is it is okay. I mean, you know, you have done you have gone to school, you get your degree, you're now being publicized in church, you are up for promotion, you know, all these things are things that, um, the, you know, the nominal or nominal um, brethren, they, they, they accept and they embrace and, you know, it is something that is, that is so, so remarkable. You know that if you you are not reading these things, you you would be totally out of the know. You would believe that you know what we're doing is okay, and we can just continue and just wait for the coming of the Lord, and we will all be saved. And you know what this is saying? It's not the case at all. We're really we're really going against what the Lord has um, commanded us to do, and and you know you see it all over it is not something that i remember not to be too long i remember a mother she was homeschooling her child and i know it wasn't it was something that was frowned upon at the time i was i didn't have any children and it's something that it was i you know you could sense that is something that is not embraced because everybody else is sending their children to school you know, and I can just imagine that pressure that woman, that mother went through, and it is the same thing now. If you are embracing this level of truth, you you will be, I mean, you know, you will be frowned upon. You would you would be seen as maybe a little bit quirky, you know, when you really think about it. And so it it tells us that we really have to know what we believe, because that's the only way we'll be in a position to stand. Amen. Man. I also want to add that um, decrees, we, see, we, saw, we saw where it coming from, it's from the Pope. And eventually, um, you know, it's saying that the decrees that we have given out, they will come back and it will be authorized by them again. So actually, the, the whole education system is papal. We see here, yeah. the whole education mm -hmm. system. Is, so we actually um, mm -hmm. allowing our children, the people and them to take the mark of the beast then. This is what they're seeing here. So they got the yeah. paper education and they, they, they are being groomed gradually to accept the mark of the beast. Yes. Unless we understand the true science of education and we are told that seven Adventists are not ignorant of the fact that even today the papacy has the control of the control practically of all education. Yeah. And in a short time this will be openly avowed. So in a short time they will reveal what really happened with the, with the education that we are we, we think so highly of <laughs> we think so highly of you know yeah. all these ma ba phd all these things because phd is um doctor philosophy mm -hmm. and we don't believe in philosophy <laughs> so all these degrees in the letters as you say doesn't mean anything but what it is compared with the blacksmiths you know that's a trade the tailor as a trade 
you know. Mm -hmm. The trade boosts the the livelihood, the um the decrease. So we have a decision to make. Yes. So we still want to the choice people have to make is that they between them and God, what they what decision they are going to make in concerning their children and send them to school to get an education. Which is which is God doesn't approve. Amen. Amen. But uh, Sister Don and, and, and Sister Kurima, it's going to get deeper now because what you are realizing is it, you will see the price of what it costs for that whole system of education. Let us continue. Yeah. Says, because the degree simply puts the possessor in a position which distinguishes him from those who do not hold one and is not an indication of power to accomplish. Only men who are building up an educational aristocracy feel that it is necessary to protect themselves by limiting the degree conferring power. Lord have mercy. He says, they say there should be legislation regulating the granting of academic degrees. The following extract from a report is signed by a number of presidents of leading universities appeared in the columns of the Educational Review. And listen to it, it says the degree conferring power is not to be granted to any institution having requirements for admission and for graduation lower than the minimum standard established by the commission or to any institution whose productive endowment is not equal to at least $100,000. He says the law is an admirable one and ought to be adopted by every state in the union in order that wildcat education may go out, go the way of wildcat Banking, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Nicholas Murray Butler, Educational Review, 1891, Volume 16, page 103. So you see that you see those men came together and, 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 and they put this law together. It says, let me just read it again. It says the degree conferring power is not to be granted to what? To any institution having requirements for admission and for graduation lower than the minimum standard established by the commission or to any institution whose productive endowment is not equal to at least a hundred thousand dollars okay now we, we have heard about it we we probably hear people experiences as to how much it costs for them to send the children to school have we not heard that do we do we not see the amount that they pay for this yeah. oh yeah well, yeah well. Okay, let us continue. It says, you will be interested in the following statement contained in a letter written by the Educational Secretary of the Seventh Adventist Denomination in 1896 concerning an interview with Mrs. Ellen G. White on this subject. Now, uh, Brethren, we are, getting into, we are getting into a bit deeper of this, this situation that we are facing today with our educational institutions. It says, I explained it to her the significance of the degrees and the meaning that was attached to them and the general course of study which was implied by them in the eyes of other educators. And the idea seemed to be that there is no need uh, that we should pay attention to these things, uh, that uh, what we want to do is to educate for usefulness here and the eternal kingdom hereafter. And that the question we for our people is not whether a young man has a degree, but whether he has a suitable preparation so that he can be a blessing to others in this work. I should want to feel perfectly free to arrange the work just as I thought would be best for the young people and for the and for the work without having been bound by the idea that you must maintain a course of study so that you can consistently grant degrees. Hmm? The object of our school should be to prepare students to carry the message of Christ's second coming to all the world and to prepare them speedily. He says, this work is not to wait while his servants go through such wonderful elaborate preparations as our schools are planning to give. And it's come from Fundamentals of Christian Education, page 346. Let us hope that seven Adventists may save themselves from these pitfalls that caught the, the Protestant denomination before 1844. Mm. Again. The question should be asked then, 
once he, the, the students go out, we spend all that money to send them to school. Could they give the message? And most, no. more often than not, they, they don't even know what they believe. They can't yeah. give the, 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 they can't tell anything about what the, the doctrinal beliefs. They don't know. Mm -hmm. And then you could just have a random survey and pick anyone. Yes, but you see, again, as I was saying, I'm coming back to this because that was not startling to me. But I'm seeing that where what what is being taught at those schools, especially those theolo theological schools, uh, theology. We were I was on a Zoom, and I'm I'll, I'll mention it again because I was a bit startled, as I said, that um the 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 minister is telling the is talking about the twenty eight fundamental beliefs. This is our doctrine. Can you imagine that? No. Can you imagine a minister saying that this is where we have to look? But that's how they're trained. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are being told that we should not have any creed. And you are seeing this is where it falls. The church manual falls under that. We were mm -hmm. not supposed to have that. So mm -hmm. we, when you, when we mention that to, to the brethren and the brethren thinking that we are we are against the denomination, the conferentiates, but no, it is there. It's either we have to accept it as a people or not. Because when that was being brought up, she said, no, we should not have that. So we, it is, it, we, I don't know, we, I don't even know what to do, but we are getting this and we, we, we have a decision to make. Yeah, Allah didn't think those things happened after she died. Implement a lot of things after she died. Yes, 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 yes. So, well, then again, we don't read our books, right? So, <laughs> since we don't read the books, you would know. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, if we are. Well, just, I... Go ahead. I'm saying that if we just want to be fed, like Sister Don was saying, and we don't read, we want to be fed by, by ministers who have gone to those schools. And we, we we admire them and we are saying that they know they know what's best for us. But when we when we test the spirit and we are realizing that these these degrees are even getting them more foolish, meaning not foolish in a bad way, but uh foolishness in the eyes of God, we 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 we, 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 we turn to believe them what as to what they say. And when we when we study what they say, and God give us the opportunity and privilege to study for ourselves what the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy says, then we will see this is two different kinds of, of, of messages. And we have a decision to accept which one we think is true. So uh we have to read, Reverend. We we mm -hmm. we, we, we we like to be spoon fed. We have to read for ourselves. Study mm -hmm. God with ourselves. Amen. Um, I had a, there was a sermon today in church on David and Goliath. And so um, the, he's just an elder, just, he's an elder. He de, I don't think he has any degrees. Anyhow, he's uh, talking about um, David and Goliath from, I think it was Numbers chapter 20, if I'm not mistaken. And um, <clears throat> at the, oh no, I don't, I don't think I have the text just right. Um, but anyhow, um, right at the end of the chapter was a little paragraph, just a little paragraph. And it may seem insignificant, but it was from the spirit of prophecy because I have the Bible, study Bible that has uh, volume seven, I believe it is, the commentaries, which is Ellen White's writings. And, um, and he was talking, 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 you know, and um, he said that, and this, this may seem small to many, but um, he said that Goliath was um, nine feet tall. Is that true or false? I think he, I think he was taller than that. Yeah, he was. And and he he went into how much as a person that tall a man would weigh and all of this. And um, when it was over and we were shaking hands and everything, I said, 
just want you to know that the spirit of prophecy, I believe it's um, spirit of prophecy, volume one, page 307, something like that, um, says that he was 12 feet, 12 feet tall. And, and then in Sabbath school, we had just uh, learned about Moses. And when Moses struck the rock twice and water came out, but God told him to speak to the rock, not strike it, but to speak to it. And so Moses at that time, see, he didn't follow God's exact direction. And, um, and so that caused him not to go into the promised land. Because he didn't follow the, not only he didn't follow what God said, he um, he he lost control. He he lost his self control. He called um, the people rebels, and um, you know he strikes the rock, and water comes out. But what what was lost was the the spiritual meaning. For whatever God tells us, there's a spiritual meaning. And that's what we learn in true education. From a young child, we're learning that everything familiar, everything that we see and touch, taste, everything points us to God. And so that's what we're looking for is the spiritual connection so that we can stay in con connection with God. We're not going to forget him if whatever happens, you know, can remind us of of that. And so as I was sitting there listening to this sermon and, um, and he said nine feet and right there, you know, I saw the quote said 12 spirit of prophecy says he was 12 feet. Well, why does the spirit of prophecy t tell us 12 feet? What does 12 mean? 12 means, um, perfect government. Well, why was, why was Goliath, you know, Philistine, um, 12 feet, you know, when you, when you think that's so, so tall, um, 12 means perfect government, but he was, you know, a heathen. So numbers can also mean the opposite. So he was, he was coming to Israel and he was, you know, saying, I'm going to fight you. And then David comes out, this little guy can't even wear, you know, a suit of armor because it wasn't tested and proved. But what was tested and proved was that God's government is higher. God's government is higher than uh, the enemies. And when we understand that, then we can be like David. And it doesn't matter, you know, but it does matter how tall he was, 12 feet, to show that God's government is higher. And even though you don't, you're not that high, you know, David was this little guy, 17, 18 years old, I think, um, but he proved that God, God was greater, stronger, higher. We that's what we have to understand in our education. Anyhow, little things. It's the little things that can help us and help other people um, understand God and His government, His kingdom, and and that no matter how small we look, like um, oh, there you go. Yes, you got the the um yeah where is it it's sp spirit of prophecy um oh volume one yeah page 370 very good um <clears throat> but just as the it what it also t helped me to see was i need to be to be studying myself even um when they're preaching a sermon and when we have this knowledge of of what numbers mean what what everything like god said you know say speak to the rock and we do something different like moses it can keep us out of the promised land um we need to know what the truth is so you take the bible and you take the spirit of prophecy away how are you going to know that you're not being deceived and then when when they don't even well you know they'll let you but in a lot of churches, you can't um, you can't do very much if you don't hold a degree. That just has so much weight in our world today. And so, this information that we're reading from studies in Christian education, like it did for me years and years ago, when I read it, read that this is a degrees is a, from a papal system. A, the system, the papal system, is what makes up the papacy. We don't want it.
We don't want it. We we want to know the truth. And so today's the day to start, you know, making the Bible, spirit of prophecy, checking everything out, getting that sunlight education curriculum, no matter if you have children or not, no matter what your age is, learning what God's system of education is, becoming that little child, and then sharing what you know, little here, little there, however powerful God, you know, gives you the boldness to be able to share it. The people need to know. And that's what church is about. That's what home is about. It's about the truth. And when people don't know what the truth is, like I shared with the the one who gave this sermon today, he's 12 feet. He's not nine. I don't know. We're just accepting things that are not true and be willing to correct it. And this gentleman, he said, oh, I'll have to correct that in my notes. So that that takes humility to to be reproved to be corrected and um because we want we want to be able to share the truth and share the deeper meaning god has a meaning a spiritual meaning for everything everything and to know him is to really love him because we understand to know is to understand and that's what god wants he wants us to understand his word Amen and amen. So we are moving over to another topic in this, uh, which is point number four. Uh, talk about educational principles. Let's see what it says here. It says, before we carry the message of present truth in all its fulfillment to other countries, we must uh, first break every yoke. We must come in the line of true education, walking in the wisdom of God and not in the wisdom of the world. God calls for messengers who will be true reformers. We must educate, educate to prepare who will a people who will understand the message, uh, then and then give the message to the world. Coming from the Madison School page thirty, says the objective of these studies have been to aid your you students to understand the instruction in the in the paragraph just read, that you may avoid the educational pitfalls and that you may come into the line of true education and have a part in carrying the message to the world. We shall review briefly the subject, the least, sorry, and least important educational principles found in both systems. As, uh, as, these, as these are presented, determine your attitude to each one and ascertain your reason for taking that position. You are asked to do this with uh, with the hope that it, it will strengthen your position on educational questions and aid you to come into the line of true education and thus be better prepared to carry the message of crisis soon coming. It, it is done with the hope that you may more fully sense the deep significance of the statement. Now, as never before, we need to understand the true science of education. If we fail to understand this, we shall never have a place in the kingdom of God. Christian educator... August 1st, 1897. Any questions? Any comments on there? We can't give what we don't have. We have to know first before we go and share it. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have to believe it and we have to understand it before we share it with another person. It, it has to become a part of us, eh? In order for it to shift. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Don. So mm -hmm. we are going on the different principles now. Principle number one: Protestants hold their children in the church when they receive Christian education. Uh huh. Mm hmm. They lose their children when they attend schools having a paper system. Melanchthon said religion can be maintained without them, which is cool. Uh -huh. I read this. This is true. It's true, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, there, there is a book uh uh the sister white used a lot in terms of um re referring to the reformers and uh, let me just share it with with uh, so we could see. 
And before I, I'll I'll go back to that. It talks about you see this book here, History of the Reformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very, very important book. I started reading this book, I got it. Uh and it is very, very educational. And when you read this book, that's why she took a lot of the book in uh sorry, she she used that book to write the um the the the, the history. Of, of the Reformation, meaning in the book Great Controversy. Mm -hmm. He used that book, and this is powerful. Mm -hmm. So I started reading it. So there are a lot of books for us to read. Plenty. Very, very. So uh, we are, let's go back over there. It says, um, the people's system of education is never a fit model for Protestant schools. Luther and Melanchthon recognized this. According to according, they reformed the, the school system, changing their, their curriculum, tech, textbooks, and methods of teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, three, says some schools, Christians inform, follow the people system, sandwiching in the, a little Bible and flavoring the course with Protestant theology. Johnston did this. So have some schools since the days of Sturm. Okay, we can find out who this uh uh this gentleman was. Uh, point four, he says that from this combination, educational system, this combination, educational system, which is Christian and people mixed, always open, always opens the way for a splitting theological controversies, and the students are neglected for heresy hunting. Lord have mercy. It, it it always determines in a victory for people over Protestantism. Now we you know we we, we nearly found ourselves in, in that huh? in 1960 in 1960 no 1955 when uh those men from this um, evangelical movement came and mm -hmm. and wrote this book questions on doctrine and we had to give we had to give away the um the well the the sanctuary was attacked and also the righteousness of Christ, that we could attain righteousness through Christ, we could make perfect. So this was, I would say, it was being given away. That part of the doctrine that what we believe in. It says, point number five, the people's system of education makes a moloch of abstract sub subjects and worship at this at his shrine. <laughs> ah, Lord, I'm mercy. Uh, but, but this is for you, go ahead. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if um, top, um, number three, when you have a little Bible, just have a little Bible, not much. That's enough to make it appear a PR Christian school. Uh huh. <laughs> you know. That's I thought about that. I thought about that, Sister Dawn. Meaning the the New Testament, the little blue. I don't know what color it was by over in Trinidad, but we had the little blue. The Old Testament was being taken, and you only had that walking everywhere in your pocket. <laughs> but I just use that as as that. But it it doesn't say that. But yes. But so the um, these Christian some schools Christian in form, so it appears as a Christian school, but they follow the paper system of education and they have a little Bible in sandwich between a little bit of Bible, not much. Yeah. And then you have um, but it's really favoring Protestant theology. And so some think they believe it's not really what we believe. And then we have the other one now where we don't believe, even up to today. People don't believe the brethren don't believe that we can live above sin. As you say in 1955 mm -hmm. doctrine, that um, righteousness by faith doctrine. Yeah. Okay, so well, you when you have okay when you have a com when you have a combination of um Christian and pagan or papal, you have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And and this produces a form of godliness when God is calling us to primitive godliness. Yep. God is calling us to his system of education. Amen. So I just went back to, to have, the, have us to see what Moloch means. That's why I laugh. Because this is not... It says... The paper system of education makes a moloch of abstracts, subjects, and worships at his shrine. So 
let us just see what Moloch is, or, or the God of Moloch, we, which we which we saw in the Old Testament. He says, let me just read, uh, da, 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 I'll just read right here. He says, in the Hebrew Bible, and then Moloch is presented as a foreign deity who was at times illegitimately given a place in Israel's worship as a result of the syncretic statistic policies of certain apostate kings. Now, uh, it, it is basically a god. Let me just, Moloch also spent Moloch, a Canaanite deity associated in biblical sources with the practice of child sacrifice. What we are doing? The name derives from combined so consonants of the Hebrew melop or king with the vowels of Boshet, the vowels of your Boshet, which is shame, the latter uh, often being used in the Old Testament as a variant name for the popular god Baal. Mm. You were saying something, Sister Kodima? Well, we're sacrificing our children on the shrine or on the Ooh. altar of Moloch, Ooh. on Baal. We're get, we're sacrificing them to Baal. That's what the what. It's such a tragedy. Yeah. We're, wow. we're sacrificing them by sending them to a papal system of schooling. And we wonder why we ha we're we not in the, the, the land of Canaan yet. Because oh. when, mm. when I read this book, I said, I'm not sending my children to um, school. But see, to, to, to help people see this and understand it, that's been my, my aim all these years. Amen. Is to to try to help people see it, but it's not an easy thing to explain to people unless they're willing. Like you're all willing to read these books together long term. God is He's going to bless you if you put this into your life, this knowledge and wisdom, and share it. Amen. Amen. Okay. Wow. It shrine flies in repeating meaningful forms, and a dead study of words takes the place of a living knowledge of things. It says mental cramming and formal memorizing are exalted methods of his teachers. Emulation, prizes, and rewards are needed, are needed stimulants for a mechanical and compulsory drilling on intelligent, intelligible formulas, and their long stereotype courses end in degrees. Uh, the sign of map, the sign or map of the system. It is a subjugation mm. of human minds to the authority of someone above the stifling of free thought or by a natural close supervision in place of self-government. It leads away from nature, nature's work and nature's God and centralizes in cities and man-made institutions. This is paper education. And his reward is the degree conferred at the end of a traditional course. Mm. Are you all hearing me? Yes. It's really heavy. <laughs> okay. So let me just go to uh principle number six. It says every school is the pulse beat of some organization of the state. If it is a state school of the papacy, if a people school and of the Christian church, if it is a Christian, if it, if it is, you know, it is a Christian school. And any educational system which mechanically teaches a, a stereotype course leading to degrees will in time result in the development of a creed by its controlling organization. A creed written or perhaps consisting only of the opinions of those in power, but a creed nevertheless, according to which everyone not recognizing his power to initiate is, is considered regular, irregular or uh, independent. So mm. you are seeing what's happening there. Mm -hmm. And we just mentioned creed a while ago. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on those two principles? It, how could it be spelled out any plainer or, or simple to understand? It's a people system of education and emulation what you're doing look at this the mental cramming and formal memorizing are exalted methods of its teachers that's very important emulation prizes and rewards are needed 
stimulants for a mechanical and compulsory drill of unintelligible formulas and their long stereotype courses end in degrees. The sign or mark of the system. And I always put right next to that false system, that worldly papal system, uh, God's system of education, you get a degree also, which is a measure of faith. <laughs> you, that's your that's your degree, your faith. Will God find faith on the earth when he returns? Only if you go against the world. See, we've joined the world. The whole world's going to wander after the beast. And he's going to, you're going to be, you're going to succumb to it through that system of education that gives you, you look like a good Christian, but you're not. That's what the book of Revelation says. See that are, they're Jews, but are not. You know, that's very serious. serious. That's one thing I was even saying in my mind that, you know, with this formal system that we have, oh, you know, will God find faith? You know, when you see so many of us that have been led to believe that this is the way in which we we need to go. You know, I, I know it tells me that God has to do a mighty work amongst his people. It's, and, you know, and we have to do our part as well. Amen. And for years we've heard, uh, we've heard this independent. We, you know, it's not good to be independent. Well, independent ministries, yes, have, um, have uh, gone away from the church in many ways. But um, as soon as you drop the degree system, and you you talk against it you become irregular and independent because um we're we're, we're seeing in, Re in revelation when it says the whole world will wander after the beast and the degree system today even in our church you know you have to have a master's degree to be a pastor um and to come out of it, the three angels' message is come out of that system into God's system. It truly is. The Sabbath is a part, a huge part of it. Um, but I can see that unless we understand this true science of education, the Sabbath will not have the meaning that it does for those who understand true education. And this is one of the reasons for 12 years now here at Uchi Pines, I've been free to, to direct the family Sabbath school to help families come out of that system of education. And when the children are young, there's not the pressures that they are when they become school age and then teenagers. And so there's such a need for parents and young people, it's hard to get the young people to really understand it because they don't see their need until the children come, sadly. And um, that my prayer, of course, is that that these children growing up will be strong and be able to stand against um, the things that are of the world. And I, I see that. I see that in nine-year-olds now who've been attending family Sabbath school for nine years um, since they were babies and, and their parents working with them day, day by day. Um, there's a real change in these children um, and others see it. And so the result, the harvest, the the fruit of the, the labors of um, when Chris, true Christian education is presented, it's done, and um, you have different results with your children. You truly do. A creed. Yeah, the 28 fundamental beliefs. Interesting that that, that could be called a creed. Yes. Well, when I was growing up, they, they didn't have that 28 fundamental beliefs. 
Yeah, we 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 here just to just uh say something pertaining to what we are doing here. We are not uh bashing any organization. We are we are just doing what Bible and Spirit of Prophecy says pertaining to true education. And as we pray that we ask the Lord to give us the strength, the courage to be able to practically apply those those principles that we are learning. And um, this, this point came up not to look down upon the church, but we are we are being warned. And, and what happened, the brethren sometimes get themselves caught up in these things, which doesn't bring salvation. Mm -hmm. So we are, this is what we are doing. So when we are saying that this was not being asked to be done, meaning, as you mentioned, Sister Kodima, that we are not we are not thinking that we are better than them. We are we are helping asking the Lord to give us the strength, the courage again, once again to help us to apply those principles in the life that God has given us. So we say this is I... not down upon any church member, any organization. Right. Okay. So we um let's just do point number seven. And then we will stop here for today. Daddy. Yes, I'm coming. That the F plan don't have. Okay, let's go number seven. It says Protestant education allows the student freedom in the choice of studies. This freedom from the stereotype cause bears fruit in a church which provides for differences of opinion whether without the cry of heresy. Courses and degrees are an essential element in a religious trust. Trust in the very nature of things can make no use of those who question the authority. Those who differ must be crushed. Hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I think I should read some more. Let me read some more. Let me read some more. It says, there are but two system of systems of education. That's point. That's principle number eight. One inspired by the word of God and one by other literature. The Christian school not only has Bible study in its curriculum, but Bible principles are the guide of the student's life. And the spirit of the Bible is the inspiration of the school. If Bible principles are not the foundation of all subjects and the basis of all teaching, that's cool. Even though Christian in name has imbibed the papal principles. Oberlin, breaking from the papal system before 1844, restored the Bible to its place as a permanent textbook, and pagan and infidel offers were thrown out. So I will continue. Now, Oberlin, for those who are joining us for the first time, Oberlin was a blueprint, uh, as you as you read there, that it was it, it had that um that education and reform before 1844, but apparently what happened, they, they bought into the people's system of education. So we're going to point number nine now. It says, uh, any system of education that exalts the Bible will receive light on health reform, simplicity of dress, country life, etc. Oberlin, preparing for the midnight cry before 1844, accepted light on these subjects. Again, you see, he's just reiterating those points that we were reading uh, we were reading before, meaning when we first started reading this book. It says, um, students discarded the use of flesh foods, tobacco, condiments, tea and coffee, rich pastries, hot breads. They used graham flour, discarded sloppy foods, expensive dress, jewelry, accepted the country as God's home for man, etc. These same reforms will be carried to completion by those who are preparing for the loud cry again. Let me read this point number nine again. All the points are very beautiful, but we could relate to that. It says, any system of education, meaning we can relate to all, but I'm just, let me just read that one again. It says, any system of education that exalts the Bible will receive light on health reform, simplicity of dress, country life, etc. Oberlin, preparing for the midnight cry before 1844, accepted light on these subjects. Students discarded the use of flesh foods, tobacco, condiments, tea, and coffee, rich pastries, hot breads. They used graham flour, discarded sloppy foods, expensive dress, jewelry, 
accepted the country as God's home for man, etc. These same reforms will be carried to completion by those who are preparing for the loud cry. As you saw that Oberlin failed to do that midnight cry before 1844. And we, we know that there is a loud cry to be done. And God is preparing the people to do, to, to do this loud cry. So let me just read number 10. Let me, let me if you have any four, just hold it. Let me just read number 10 and we'll discuss and, and, and close after that. It says, Christian schools are content with simple, modest buildings and equipment, but must give great and mighty truth. Papal schools must have massive buildings and elaborate equipment, but are content with little or unadulterated truth. Jefferson and others dealing with the big truths caught the idea of simple buildings. The loud cry will be ushered in by schools content with simple buildings and equipment, but they will be doing a great work. But our uh, question, question, are we, are there those schools? Meaning it says the loud cry will be ushered in by schools content with simple buildings and equipment, but they will be doing a great work. Uh, have we seen that? I think through the years, um, at least for me, um, Wildwood um, has been one that has tried with an emphasis on health, but they did try also trades. And uh, Uchi Pines was also, um, the health message was the emphasis. And when you look at that list in number nine, um, you know, you, you want to, you, you want to really prayerfully look at that list and uh, check it off, so to speak, check off list, um, how God has been leading, because that's how the Bible, Spirit of Prophecy leads. So that's the type of schools that um, you want to look for, not that they're perfect. Like, I don't see Uchi Pines as perfect, but um, I don't see the church as perfect. Uh, I don't see Wildwood as perfect, but they're striving in that direction. Even Heartland, because I've been at Heartland, worked there for 11 months, um, <clears throat> striving to be. And so, like you mentioned about um, the church, we're not tr trying to be critical of the church. But when you bring up the truth as you read it and see it, um, what it does is it 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 reproves its correction and um jesus see he he lived the truth he lived true education and he was rejected if the church well we're we're told we're going to be prisoners of hope so there um there will be places that are being raised up uh, people that are trying to raise them up um, you're asking for, are there schools like that today? Um, we have Weimar that's being uh, headed up by Dr. Neil Nedley, and they are in a degree system. Um, and Heartland, I believe, is is gone to a degree system. So... <clears throat> I think that as people uh, learn about true education, what it is, that there will be those that that start schools. Um, I, I, I couldn't give you names of others, but I think that there's a lot of people that are studying it and um, trying. I know Sunlight Education Ministry wasn't a school, but it was producing curriculum material based upon this book, the book education and studies in Christian education. So um, that's the, the one curriculum that I have found that comes closest. And there's Remnant Preparatory School, which is an online school. Um, I don't really like online type schools, but I mean, that's something that people are trying today. Yeah, I think home should be the best school, but we are told we're prisoners of hope, so there will be schools. And as they start up, because of this technology, it's easy to 
get the word out um, that they're they're doing their best. I know Dwayne Lemon. I think he had um, been a part of some some school. I think he had tried to start one. Uh, there's Meat Ministry with Thomas Jackson. That's more uh, in health medical missionary work. Um, so there are those that have have made attempts at your education. Amen. Yeah, I asked the question because we they might they, they, they have there there is but we, we might not know who, who mm -hmm. they are. Yeah so it's it's good that you point out this the majority of them I know. Um I'm I'm just thinking about Hartland uh but the others I think I know the remnant prep I know all of these mm -hmm. yeah but just this one it's one on the screen which is Hartman okay. but my 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 encouragement is that we keep studying what true education is because we can put out a lot of money to send our young people to these places but um, the more you know about what true education is, once again, you know, the I know all homes that are trying it are not perfect, but um, there's just, there's so much to what true education is. So I think that one can study it without spending lots of money to be so-called trained in it. We just, we need to be studying ourselves. Amen. Amen. Okay. And there are... I think we're, we're to be gleaners too, because wherever we go, we can glean good things. I've been um, volunteering for the last 20 years in institutions or, you know, self-supporting work and uh, wherever we go, we uh, we study and we learn from others and um, and continue to grow in that way. Um, yeah, because there's a, a lot said in the spirit of prophecy about self culture. I may have brought this up before, but self culture is is um, I've made a little um, pamphlet. I don't I'd have to find it of the steps. It's basically learning to study for yourself. And um, when you know how to do that, you're not necessarily, you know, looking for others to teach you. Like here, we're, we're reading from um, Spirit of Prophecy and then uh, E.A. Sutherland and making sure that E.A. Sutherland, you know, is, is coinciding with the principles um, from the Spirit of Prophecy and, of course, the Bible. So uh, you might look that word up to self-culture. And uh, that's pretty much how I've um, learned. And then my my children or my, my daughter, especially. Well, that's a very good way of, 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 of learning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is, um, we talk about that as well, right? Yeah. You, you don't have to start it early school to learn all those years. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I believe in that. Huh? Mm -hmm. And that, that's that's how God has had me to grow uh, uh, in the knowledge of his word by spending time studying for myself. Yes. Is it in my character and personality? I'm not oh. too sure. Um, oh, no, no, no. Wait, that's Oh, it was sure. one place. I think it's in um why testimonies, I think with health. Something oh. to do with health. Yeah. Because people used to go to all these learn these long studies to be, as medical missionary. You could learn in one of those books. Okay. Okay. There so many. Okay. We'll get it. But that, that's very, very in encouraging to have the Holy Spirit to guide us as we study. And then we come and share. Yeah. 
Because if we, hmm? we get so accustomed at the at a human being in front of us teaching us, that's what we think school is. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. The greatest teacher is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, the Spirit of Prophecy also talks about the school of Christ. The school of Christ. So that would be, we're all in the school of Christ. That's a daily school that we're in. <laughs> with, yeah. with Christ as our master teacher. Amen. Can you something on, the, on, on it? Uh, self-culture? But we will see. Yes. yes. And, yes. and I believe that as we learn these principles, that we we really head to the church, the, the Seventh-day Adventist church, if, if these principles that we're learning can be taught. Like, we have a conference president here at Uchi Pines. We have a conference church, though, that that Uchi Pines is um, paying for this church, but it it will eventually belong to the the um, the church. Um, and he the the conference president doesn't really understand a lot of what we do here. Um, but because there's such unity, and especially like in the church board, uh, I, I may have mentioned this before. You know, I I, I don't have a degree. I what I do. I do uh, like somewhat quietly and I work with the individual um, families. And then of course they have me teaching here, the trainees that come. Um, But because there's this understanding to a degree, not everybody understands what true education is, but because Uchi Pines has uh, Dr. Agatha. That's who I bought the book Studies in Christian Education from. I believe she understood um, a good part of it. So I believe that I've been allowed to be here for a time. I don't know how long um, to to a, to be able to help encourage the church. Um, that's what Jesus, you know, I mean, I, even as a baby that. The priest that dedicated him didn't even recognize who he was. But those who were studying the Simeon and the Anna, they knew, they recognized who Jesus was. And so I believe there's people in the church that are praying for the Holy Spirit to lead them into all truth. And so they, you'll connect with them. And that's in the church, out of the church, people that are praying and you're praying and you're, you're confessing your sins and, you know, you're. God is purifying you. He can use you as an instrument to be a light in the church, in the home, wherever you are. And um, the the most important thing is that we have on, um, we allow God to put that robe of righteousness upon us so that when we either receive correction or reproof or persecution, we uh, are like Jesus. Um in character and we don't retaliate we don't you know show vengeance or anything like that we we must study the the character of christ and and see it throughout the bible what he's like how he treats sinners how he treats the church the apostasy in the church how he treats it all um and that's that's what's going to bring light to the church like paul he was saul and then it was the actual stoning of Stephen that that changed him. And I believe that um, many will many will be martyrs in the end. And if you're not going to die. If you die as a martyr, you will not die for nothing. There will be those that come to a knowledge of the truth because of the way you die, the way you're martyred. And um, <clears throat> so... It's so wonderful to know that God is going to give us grace. He's going to give us power to, as we learn these principles, to to begin to incorporate them into our life, to make changes. Um, sometimes in the home, there's not they don't understand. Your spouse may not understand. Your children may not understand the changes that you're trying to make. But if you have that spirit of Christ, no matter what happens, you will always love them people that don't accept these truths that they they reject them do you know like jesus on the cross he's like father forgive them for they know not what they do it, just terrible things to him so um 
the truth sets us free. Um, the robe of righteousness upon us will, with Christ living in us, we will portray his character, not by any strength that we have, but it's the faith that we have to accept Christ and the truth into our life. When we look irregular, when we look independent, because we are not like what the world is pushing and even the church that doesn't know because they have set aside these truths that we're reading right now. So when we, we talk about education and character um, and character being the highest aim, um, may this week, you know, God, through his spirit, bring to your attention, you know, where you may be lacking in these character traits as you study through like the sunlight, even the children's um, section where we just go through the Bible and nature and character. And we, we see, I mean, this last week I was complaining. and But that was the focus too. The Lord wants to clean us up. He wants to be able to put that lovely robe on us when we're clean. And he can only do that. His blood cleans us. And then every day, just like we have to take a shower, just like every day we have to eat spiritually, he cleans us spiritually, he nourishes us, and um, and he gets us ready, gets us ready for his coming, gets us ready for the, the trouble that's right ahead of us. So that's my prayer for all of us, that, that as we learn new things about our character, new things about what true education is, what that fault system of education, that papal system of education, what the result is, that God will just fill us with his character so that we will present to others not only the knowledge, but the character. Because when that character is in us, that's what's going to testify um, most importantly, that we know God and we're on the right path. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this, this afternoon. We normally on... The point the, the time will be changing on Sunday. Oh, so we'll fall back. So you're meeting at two o'clock, right? No, you will be meeting at two o'clock. We will stay oh, at, our, be... at our Oh, normal... you stay at the same time. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you for reminding me. Yes. So just letting, <laughs> letting everyone know. In mm -hmm. the US and the UK. And also the Bahamas too. The Bahamas will be going back one hour. Jamaica says the same. Meaning the same time that we're coming on, Jamaica comes on the same time. But you in the US and the UK, Canada, going back one hour. Yeah. Okay. Can anyone pray for us to close? <laughs> Okay. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your grace and your mercy towards us. We thank you for being with us today and for what we learn about true education. We pray, God, you will bless Sister Kodima in her endeavors and those brought her thus far. We thank you for knowing her, God, and what, they are, what we are learning. But more so, God, this, what we are learning here, help us to be brave, help us to be purposeful and intentional because it's going to prepare us for the time of the end. Help us not to take us a light matter. So God, teach us. We ask for your Holy Spirit in our minds 
with us this week. And it must be shared with Akati. We'll do it. We'll do it to the love of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So see you all next Sabbath, friends. Okay. God bless everyone. Thank you so much. I was blessed by the reading and the discussion. Amen. The contact in the army for your close up, brother Bunnies. The highest in. Beg your pardon? Sister Peggy to put out to put a contact in the chat if she wants. Yes, yes, I copied it. I copied it already. Yeah. I was yeah. But Sister Hyacinth said that she's having problems opening a WhatsApp. So All right. yeah. Are you part of our WhatsApp group, Sister Hyacinth? Yes, I was added this week, but WhatsApp is not opening. It keeps saying it needs to update, but it never goes past it. So I don't know what's happening. Okay, okay, okay. I guess we'll just have to work on time. I pray. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, okay, bye bye, bye, -bye. everyone. Did you say something? I said maybe she may need a new phone. We all these phones are down. Everything updated. <laughs> Yes, yes. But she knows when we come in on because I think you're on this morning, Sister Hyacinth? No, I wasn't on this morning. I actually got the link in another group on Telegram. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Sister, I think Sister Veronica posted it in a country living support group. Okay, okay. Nice. Well, I yes. guess you will be just, if, if you're unable to get it through WhatsApp, I guess you could get it through Telegram when we are on. Yes, she shares it every time that we are on. Yes, yes, she does. Yeah, Un until you get that problem rectified. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.